Hi, my name is Hugh from SRI Instruments, and I'd like to show you how to um, analyze residual solvents and how to make a calibration for residual solvents. So the residual solvents test, you put um, the concentrate in one of these 40 milliliter bottles, and then you take a, a heat gun, and you melt the concentrate on the inside of the bottle. Now, of course, you will have weighed the concentrate so you know how much concentrate is in the bottle. Typically, we're going to use one gram as the um, desired weight, even though you could use less and adjust the math accordingly. But just to make the math easy, we're going to use one gram as the weight. So you can see how when I heat the concentrate, it kind of forms a thin little um, film on the inside of the glass and that allows any residual solvents that are trapped in the matrix of the concentrate to be released into the, the air inside the bottle. So having released all the residual solvents now, we take a plastic medical syringe and we suck out usually half a milliliter of this, of this residual solvent and squirt it into the GC. Now this particular GC that we're working with has a three-foot HACEP D column to do the residual solvents analysis. You may have a different column, which is fine. You just have to make some adjustments in the temperature program, etc., like that. But this particular GC has two columns, one for the potency and the terpenes, and the other for the residual solvents. So we'll be injecting into the column that has the residual solvents column. So that's how you do the, the sample part of the preparation. But here's how you make the calibration. So the nice thing about this way of making calibrations is you can calibrate on whatever molecules you want just by having a supply of the individual molecules. So for instance, here I have ethyl alcohol, so ethanol, which is a common solvent for um, concentrate preparation. And then here I have isobutane, which is just a $5 can at the hardware store for refilling lighters. So what we're going to do is we're going to take one microliter of the ethanol so wash out my syringe a little bit and then I'm going to measure out one microliter of the ethanol exactly one microliter and then when I put it in the bottle I'm going to go through the septum here and then I'm going to hold the the syringe up near the surface of the bottle so that I can actually see the little droplet of liquid on the inside of the bottle when I dispense it into the bottle right so I'm sure I put the ethanol in there and I know exactly how much I put in. I put in one microliter of ethanol, and I know what one microliter of ethanol weighs. I know that, that one microliter of ethanol weighs 0.787 milligrams per um, microliter because it says right on the bottle of the ethanol what the specific gravity is, right? So you, it says 0.7. Eight seven seven eight five, so um, that's how you know how much one microliter of ethanol weighs. So there's 0.785 um, milligrams of ethanol in this bottle. So 0.785 milligrams is the same as 785 micrograms. Right? That's the same weight, and the the sample that we're going to use had a gram in there. There was a gram. Uh, one gram of the concentrate. So one gram is the same as one million micrograms, right? So the ratio of the point of 785 micrograms to one million micrograms means the same thing as 785 parts per million by weight, right? So that's how we make a calibration standard in the bottle for ethanol. So we do the same thing with the butane or any other gas or any other sample that's in a gas phase. So I have my little can of, um, of isobutane and I put a little piece of silicone tubing on the little dispenser nozzle. So I put my syringe in there and then when I squeeze you can see it pushes that, pushes that plunger right up. Here let me do it again. It's, you have to really hold your hand over the plunger to keep it from getting pushed up too far. See how that pressure does? So, so I've got I've got now a syringe full, one milliliter plastic medical syringe, full of isobutane, and I know how much that weighs too. I know that butane weighs 
0.47 milligrams per milliliter. It's a little heavier than air. So it's so the, the butane, the isobutane, weighs 2.47 milligrams per milliliter, which that's actually that's the same as um, 200. Um, I'm sorry, we're going to only put in a tenth of a milliliter into the bottle so that we don't put in too much. So that really works out to um, 0.247 milligrams of weight, which is the same as 247 micrograms. And again, we're going to compare that to the amount of isobutane that came off one gram of sample, which is one gram is the same as one million micrograms. So 247 micrograms divided by a million micrograms, that's 247 parts per million. So we know what the concentration now is. When I put the one, the tenth of a milliliter of isobutane in the vial along with the evaporated ethanol, so now I have two components in my residual solvent standard. Now I can add any number of other molecules to there. If I want to put in some hexane, I put in some hexane. I want to put in some isopropanol, I put in some isopropanol. The beauty of this approach is it's, it's virtually cost-free to do this, and you can make a standard that contains any particular molecules that you're worried about. So that's how you do the, the, the calibration steps. So now what we'll do is we'll inject the calibration mixture into the GC. So I'll pump, pump, pump a couple times, make sure my syringe is, is clean, and then take a half of a milliliter and I'm going to poise it there, make sure the GC is ready to go. The temperature program that we've chosen for this particular analysis is just 180 degrees for 10 minutes, and so it's really just sitting at a constant 180 degrees. You can have other temperature programs. You could start low and ramp high, but this is nice and simple, so we're just going to sit at 180 degrees and see, see what happens. So we'll start the analysis, squirt the sample in, and then wait to see the peaks that come by. 